All right. We'll get this thing going. Appreciate everyone coming out today for House of Pain media availability with Michael Tulip and Brandon Paul. Uh, for those unaware, which I'm assuming all of you are, House of Pain is the two seed in the Illinois Regional, uh, scheduled to play the 15 seed Jackson, Tennessee underdogs July 24th uh, at 1 Central in the Illinois Regional, which will run July 24th to 28th. They were to win that game. They'll take on the winner of Always a Brave, the Bradley alumni team and Tubby Time. Joining us today are GM head coach Michael Tulip and guard Brandon Paul. I'm going to give Brandon uh, a quick second to do an opening statement just on joining the team this year and, and being a part of House of Pain, and then we'll throw it to Mike, talk about Brandon's addition as well as their first-round matchup, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Brandon? Um, yeah, I'm just excited to play with the team. Uh, you know, i played with a couple of guys before, and some of them I haven't, so – um, you know, I've known Juice for a long time. It'll be fun to get back on the court with him. And, uh, it's a lot of competitive guys together, so it's going to be a good run. Mike, you want to talk about the addition of Brandon, what he brings to the table, as well as what the first-round matchup against Jackson looks like? Yeah, for starters, obviously, it goes without saying how you know, excited we were to, to, you know, to have Brandon join us this year been around a lot of guys in my time in, in the basketball world. And, and Brandon is, is right up there with, with one of the most competitive dudes that, that I've been around. Um, so adding a guy like that to the team with his, you know, to go along with his skill set and to go along with his versatility and, and his leadership, um, it goes a long way. It goes a long way for this team and, and, and our prospects of, of making a deep run in this tournament. And, um, you know, obviously we open it up with, the tennis Jackson, Tennessee underdogs and, and just going through and watching film on them. And luckily they've been a, they've been a tournament participant for the last few years. So you can have some film on them and how they play together. And, and they're a scrappy bunch. Uh, they pressure you. They try to knock you off your spots. And I think it's gonna be a really good test for us in, in the opening round. Anyone who has any questions, feel free to use the, the raise hand function and we'll get to everyone uh, in an orderly fashion. Brandon, you last year was your first year. In Actually, we got a question from Scott Ritchie right here. I'll let Scott jump in and ask. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Brandon. Um, I guess just what were your conversations like with Mike as you sort of figured out, you know, how you might you know join the team this year? Um, I mean, he's been pretty persistent uh, trying to get me on the team in the last couple of years. And uh, he knows that I don't really, uh, you know, I haven't played, obviously. I played last year, but. I spend a lot of time in my summers kind of just working out and traveling because that's kind of my time to take off. So he was pretty respectful of my time. And he's always let me know that there's definitely a lot of interest on that side. And uh, I just felt like this summer was, was a good situation for me to, to come and play. And I think it'd be a lot of fun. And I guess, you know, you've pl played in the TBT before, you know, Dimitri has as well. And just what do you feel like maybe the two of you can bring to House of Pain that's, you know, just in its second year of existence? Um, I mean, obviously last year was a little strange with COVID uh, and it being my first year, but I just think the fact that we're both veterans, um, we've both been in the tournament together, we could bring some of that, um, you know, skill set and some of those, some of that wisdom along with the, some of the younger guys. I guess, you know, with the games in Peoria, I mean, odds are there going to be a lot of you know, Illinois fans there. Just how much you may be looking forward to playing in front of, you know, that fan base again. Uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. You know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I know how much the fans have been following this team and, you know, following Mike's progress, uh, you know, what he was able to do last year. So, uh, you know, I feel like it's been a long time coming and a lot of people have been waiting for this team to, to become, you know, a team. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Scott. We'll uh, throw it to Jeremy Werner. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, Brandon. I uh, hope you're well, man. Just wondering, uh, just watching them last year, House of Pain, did that influence you at all after seeing some of their success? Um, uh, not really. I was, I was excited to see how, much, how well they were doing. Uh, if I'm being quite honest, I really wasn't thinking about TBT a lot last year. I, uh, I didn't want to go at the end of the day. Um, I, got, I, I, want, I was excited to play, but some situations, some stuff happened that was out of my control, but... I'm very, I'm, I'm very excited this year, and, uh, you know, I, I know that they've got some guys coming back from the team from last year, so it'll be good to have that experience as well. I know you've had so much pro experience now. It's almost been a decade you've been around the world, Brandon. So I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, just bigger picture-wise, how, 
how is, you know, being in Spain, the NBA, G League, China, Australia, like how has that kind of impacted you uh, and kind of just your perspective on everything? Uh, I would say it's impacted me tremendously. I honestly more from just uh, not, not a basketball standpoint, just from uh, a life perspective, just understanding that, um, every, you know, every, anywhere you go, there's problems. Anywhere you go, there's, there's issues and, and people deal with the same stuff that you deal with. You know, sometimes it's on a greater scale, sometimes on a smaller scale. But uh, I think all my travels has is, is definitely opened my eyes and, and helped me see a lot of perspective. So if you'd tell like people, you know, some Illinois players trying to get pro right now, like what kind of advice would you give them about being a professional basketball player, whether it's the league, whether it's overseas, wherever? Uh, easiest thing, and I don't want to sound cliche, is just to humble yourself because a lot of these kids, not just Illinois guys, but a lot of players that want to become pros, they want it right away. They want to, they want to join the NBA right away. They want to go on a contending team. They want this, that, and the other, but they don't want to put in the work and they don't realize how hard it is to get to that spot, you know. Uh, there's only, I don't know how, whatever it is, 350 guys or how, wherever the number is in the NBA every year. And there's millions of basketball players. So guys just got to realize that, you know, sometimes you got to take a step back to take a step forward. And I think once guys swallow their pride and, and they're willing to accept that, um, they can help their futures. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you, Jeremy. Brandon, given your experience at all different levels of basketball, where do you think playing in TBT last year kind of is stacked up in terms of, I guess, the competition as well as the talent level? Well, it was very competitive. Um, it was fun playing against those guys at Silent Cancer. And, you know, we had some, we had, we had a competitive bunch and, you know, our, our staff, they definitely wanted to win. And uh, um, they, they did what they could with the, with, the, with the situation that we were given. But, you know, I think every year it's gotten better. You know, I watched it. A couple of years ago, when I was in Chicago, um, you know, I, I try to catch it on TV when I can, and uh, I think every year it's 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 gotten better and better. Mike, looking at the the bracket and your road to Dayton, what are your thoughts on the potential path and what you guys need to do uh, to get back to the quarterfinals this year? It's it's always tough with with a single elimination tournament. You really do have to focus on what's right there in front of you, and and for us right now, that's the that's the Jackson, Tennessee underdogs. And, and you look at obviously potential matchup with always a brave or tubby time. And, you know, I know Bayheim's army has obviously put together a, a great team as well, but you really can't, really can't worry about that. Um, and really truly have to take it one game at a time and we'll be prepared. We'll have personnel, we'll have film. Um, and we'll put all that together so that these guys feel as confident as they can in the game plan and, and what we need to do to, to win these games. So you take it one game at a time, but yeah, of course. I mean, you look at the bracket and you look at your path. Um, but I think if we just take care of business game by game, all the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. Question here from Mark Pearson. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Uh, what's up, Mike? Uh, as far as being a GM, how – Maybe challenging is it to get all the guys together, but at the same time, how much fun is it to contact all these guys and get them together and be on the same team once again? I think you nailed it just in the question itself. I mean, it's, it's certainly a challenge, but it's also um, it's fun to see them all together. Uh, I think the biggest thing, and, and Brandon touched on it a little bit, is I, I always want to be mindful of of these guys' off seasons and and you know knowing Brandon just even on a personal level. I mean. He likes to travel. He likes to see the world and, and his time to do that is summer months uh, and done playing. And, and for a lot of guys, you know, that's a chance for them to enjoy their summers and, and maybe get together with friends. And, and like I said, go and travel and see family and, and all that's extremely important. So uh, I, I try to make sure that these guys know that and it's not a, Hey, if, if you don't come play for us, you're dead to me type thing. I mean, it, it's, it truly is uh, a situation where I want them to understand that, that I, I, I see it from their perspective and, and um, you know, but I think when you go down the list, each one of these guys and their commitment to this team, it, it means that much more because I know that how much they value these, you know, these days in their off season and um, keeping in mind as well that uh, last year wasn't a typical off season. You know, there wasn't, a lot of no one could travel 
Uh, no one could go and do those things that they typically do in the off season. So, um, and this is, seems like things are opening back up. So there's the opportunity to do that. And, and for these guys to commit to, to us this year and uh, you know, having all of that culminate, I mean, it, it, it means a lot. And, and I, and on my end, helping kind of put together the team, I want to make sure that it, that it's worth their time um, and, and that we can assemble a group that can win a lot of games and that it is organized and it doesn't just feel like it's a, it's a circus when we get everybody together. So that's, that's the main focus. And, and, you know, I always go back to just saying how appreciative I am of these guys and, and um, kind of buying into the whole cause. You talk about commitment and, you know, having it all be organized. How many practices kind of go into it? Uh, what's kind of the behind the scenes work? Because obviously as fans and media, we love watching it, but we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes besides the games. Yeah. I mean, it's unconventional. It's a, it's a summer tournament um, with a lot of high level players. So the, you know, you're not going to have a ton of time to practice. We, we have a, we have a three day training camp scheduled in Peoria in the days leading up to the tournament so that we can get guys acclimated, implement some sets. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you try to do all the work on the front end. Um, and, and all that stems from, can we get good players? Can we get skilled players? Can we get smart players? And if you can check all those boxes, it makes it a little bit easier. It speeds up that learning curve to where you get to Peoria and you don't have to worry about, um, man, is this guy going to catch on to, to, to what we're trying to do, or is this guy going to be a problem? Is this a good guy? Is he going to be a problem? You know, it, all those things go into putting together the roster, um, you know, the organizational aspect of it, and, and then making sure that you can have guys that are like-minded, if you can have guys that know each other. Um, Brandon talked about even just knowing Juice since, you know, since he was in seventh or eighth grade. Um, all that stuff goes a long way when you, when you bring guys together and there's that familiarity. So those are the things that you think about in, in the months leading up to the tournament, I've always said that this is a year round um, planning process. Uh, you, you can't just hop into it in June and in May and assume that you're going to put a product out there that can, that can do some damage. So um, that's really the main focus. Appreciate you both taking time. Good luck. Thanks. I'll go back to Brandon here. Um, Brandon, you provided some great moments for Atlanta fans in, in your career. Um, didn't have a lot after that, but uh, in the last couple of years, uh, Brad's got this program going along with Ion Kofi and all these guys. Like, what, what have you thought watching them and, and what's going to mean for you to wear orange and blue again? Uh, it was great to see them and how they've transformed the program the last couple of years and how much success they've had. Uh, it's very exciting, you know, to, to kind of just sit back and be a fan and kind of see what it's what it's like to be an Illini fan. It's a lot of fun uh, to put it back on. It's definitely going to be special. And I, I just kind of want to put on a show for the fans more than anything. You know, I'm coming in to compete. I'm coming in to win and hopefully bring some guys some money. Uh, but other than that, I just, I just I'm, I'm excited to play in front of the fans again and just be able to continue to play basketball for a living. And you said Mike has been persistent. What does that look like? Like how often is <clears throat> was he hitting you up? Um, I mean, Mike, hats off to Mike because anyone that know anyone close to me, whether that's my my immediate family or my closest friends or whatever kids I went to school with, I'm really bad at texting people back. And like my response time is like non-existent. So he might he might text me on a Monday and he'll follow back up two Mondays later just to get uh, okay, you know, for me. But he knows I mean well, you know, he knows that I I try my best, but you know, he's he's been hitting me up for years, you know, since since he decided to put the team together and just gauging my interest. And uh, you know, I I, I appreciated the res the space and respect he gave me. So um, I'm glad that he's finally convinced me to play. Uh, I'll follow up with Mike. Mike, was that a stressful process not hearing back from him, or what was that recruitment like? <laughs> Um, I always like to joke that with, with Brandon, you got, you got to factor in about three to four business days, um, on, on a, on a response. Uh, but, but you also got to factor in the fact that the guys in Australia, um, I think the window of time that I had to communicate with him was in the morning, uh, between like six and 8am or at night at like 10 to midnight. So, um, but, but I think with Brandon, it always helps to, to know the guy that you're talking to. And, and Brandon's a guy that, you know, if you're able to give him his space and, and Brandon's never going to be forced into a decision, Brandon's always going to make a decision for himself. 
Um, and, and all, all my job was is just to provide them with the information, um, the team that we have and, and what it's all going to look like. Uh, I sent him over like a, a bunch of PDFs um, so that he could just read through it. And, and just, and from there, you know, I, I kind of, you know, it's in the balls in his court and it's his decision and whether he decides to play with us or decides not to like, you know, that doesn't change anything between him and I and, and, and typically with Brandon, it's, he, he has really good reasons. Um, so uh, yeah, you just, you, you make sure to kind of feel it out and, um, and understand that, you know, if we're going to have Brandon, that's a huge piece to our team. And if we're not, you know, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to act on that and how are we going to continue to recruit to, to fill that potential void? Um, but, but he's always been transparent with me. Uh, that's the one thing you'll get with Brandon is transparency. Um, he doesn't beat around the bush. He tells you how it is. Um, and, and when you're putting together a team, those are the things that you appreciate is guys that are straightforward with you and not guys that kind of lead you on and, and don't give you a straight answer or kind of are wishy-washy. And if there's one thing about Brandon Paul, he is not wishy-washy. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's another thing I've always loved about him. And, and it makes it, it makes it even more meaningful when, when he does give you a commitment because he's, he's true to his word and, and he doesn't BS. Thanks guys. Good luck. All right. We'll go to Nico here for last questions. Hey, Brandon, I was just wondering, uh, you know, with you being one of the last additions, what were your thoughts kind of on the roster that Mike has put together and who are some, you know, guys you're looking forward to reuniting with and maybe some guys you're looking forward to playing with whose uh, games you maybe kept an eye on after you left school? Yeah, I think we've got the right pieces. You know, um, it's everyone in TVT is competitive. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter the name in the back of the jersey. Uh, no one's going to step on the court and look at us and, and, and be fearful. I mean, they might, but they're coming out to play just like we are. So I'm coming, I'm going in with the mindset that whoever I step on the court with, uh, we're, we're, we're going out for blood. So I look at the roster and I see a lot of hungry guys. I see guys that, that want to compete. And I see guys that I know, you know, for the most part. So I'm definitely very excited to get on the court with these guys. That was all I had. Thanks. That's the case, then we'll wrap this up. Appreciate these guys and uh, sparing a couple of minutes for us. So appreciate it and uh, see you guys in Peoria.